गुलबरगा शहर के तमाम आर्किटेक्चर्स के लिए इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्किटेक्ट सेंटर गुलबरगा की जानब से पांच जनवरी को लेट स्टाल आर्किटेक्चर के नाम से एक स्पोर्टलाइट इवेंट ऑर्गेनाइज किया गया था स्पोर्टलाइट इवेंट एक कॉन्फ्रेंस सीरीज है जिसमें दुनिया भर में फेमस आर्किटेक्ट इस इवेंट का हिस्सा बनकर अपना एक्सपीरियंस शेयर किए हैं बेंगलोर माइंड स्पेस आर्किटेक्ट के फाउंडर मेंबर संजय मोहेसर और इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्किटेक्ट कर्नाटका के चेयरमैन बी आर मोहन सर एज ए गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर इस इवेंट को विजिट किए थे बी आर मोहन सर को हाल ही में सोदन रीजन से काउंसिल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर का रिप्रेजेंटेटिव बनाया गया है संजय मोहेसर और बी आर मोहन सर ने गुलबरगा शहर के तमाम आर्किटेक्ट्स को इस इवेंट के जरिए कामयाब आर्किटेक्ट बनने के लिए अपने की पॉइंट शेयर किए हैं इस इवेंट के जरिए बताया गया आर्किटेक्ट को किस तरह काम करना चाहिए जिससे गुलबरगा या कर्नाटका नहीं बल्कि पूरी दुनिया में मशहूर हो सकते हैं गुलबरगा गोल्ड हब कैरियर होटल में इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्किटेक्ट्स गुलबरगा सेंटर से चेयरमैन आर्किटेक्ट वैभव नवानी वाइस चेयरमैन आर्किटेक्ट भारत भूषण ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी आर्किटेक्ट यश के नानावती ट्रेजरर आर्किटेक्ट रवि तेगनूर और दीगर कई जिम्मेदारों ने मिलकर इस इवेंट को ऑर्गेनाइज किया है और इस इवेंट में गुलबरगा से आर्किटेक्ट वाजरा कुमार बी मेहता आर्किटेक्ट देवानी आर्किटेक्ट जगदीश कोमसगी आर्किटेक्ट श्रीनिवास बी आर्किटेक्ट महागवकार के अलावा कई गुलबरगा के आर्किटेक्ट्स यहां मौजूद थे इस इवेंट से जुड़ी ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए आप इस वीडियो को एंड तक जरूर देखें Good evening, everybody. Dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, and my dear architects, I welcome you all on behalf of I Kalburgi Center. My warm welcome to our chapter chairman, architect B R Mohan. Welcome you, sir. And I whole heartedly welcome our today's guest and speaker, architect Sanjay Mohan. Welcome you, sir. I don't want to take much more time. I request you all make use of architect Sanjay Mohan session. Thank you. Then started one of these small industries in a small way, and then became one of those real big uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, did a lot of work for uh, for poor people, and uh, you know a uh, lot of contributions to the school children and things like that. And then he suddenly passed away, and uh, I was pretty close to the entire family. Uh, so they called me, uh, and then they said that they have this huge farm, uh, and then they said that you can choose to build this monument anywhere, and this is like you know huge, uh, almost like 25 acres of. Uh, so it was very difficult. To, I mean, when you have too much choice, it becomes more difficult. When you have restrictions, you can say okay, you can. Uh, but we managed to sort of choose the place, and then. Um, one of the one of the restrictions was uh, those ashes had to be placed at that place within a very short time, some 15, 12 days or something. So we had to take certain design decisions very very quickly. So I'll I'll just show you this entire process what we went through. Yeah, uh, we decided to place it somewhere here. So that's how it started. Uh, so we we surveyed the the whole land. Whatever, whatever we sort of zeroed it onto. So on the left side of this is a research lab, the existing research lab. Uh, we have done extension to that almost like some 15 years back. Uh, and there are there are different kinds of trees which were existing there. I'll just go one by one. Uh, there was this avenue of trees. Uh, these are uh, Ashoka trees. Now this path would lead to their farmhouse. Uh, and this is how it looked like when, when we sort of took it. So this was one kacha path kind of thing. At the end of the end of the plot, this path, there is one uh, peeper tree. And uh, many times this Nobel laureates would come to meet him in, in his research lab. And he would take them to the farmhouse for the lunch in the afternoon. So he would take that path. 
stop at that uh, that bodhi tree and talk about you know buddha getting enlightenment under that tree and talk about it and then take those visitors to his farmhouse which is just behind that um so this was a important path um there was another path on the other side now the present boundary was where that what you see that line um Yeah. So what you what you see that uh, that stone wall uh, beyond this towards the right side was the private property. On the left side was the research lab where all the uh, scientists would walk in the afternoon. And so so one decision we took is we said we should remove that wall and bring it towards the right side. So this this whole stretch of trees should belong to the. uh to the research people the people who would visit it it should not become part of the private land so this was another strong reference for you the third reference was uh, there were there were set of trees there palm trees uh which almost formed like a wall so when you stand there it it almost created a complete plain which was a very very strong reference then um and the fourth one was the grid of uh, gulmo trees what you see below so those were it's, it was like a staggered grid but this is how they looked like when we when we sort of moved it they were not really taken care of so slightly dried up uh, but now if you see you will see the transformation they are all very healthy and green so taking all those references we started working on this whole development the first thing was to move that uh, that wall towards the right side now um there were certain characteristics of this person uh, dr anjireddy that he was like almost like a child you know we would uh, he would say everything whatever he would he would never hide everything and he had a very uh, uh, the kind of laugh like the children laugh so right from their heart so he had that very very uh, very nice laughter so uh, the transparency of the, his character we wanted to express so now since we moved that boundary towards towards the right side um problem stand there it is easy um so so the earlier boundary was there we moved it here we made that uh, almost transparent to sort of explain his character which is uh, you know the transparency so when you walk through we wanted to look into the into the monument now this was the path which he used to take which is with that um, you know uh, ashoka trees uh we wanted to represent his struggle uh, that he went through uh, the hard hardship that he went through so the flooring here it starts with very rough stones uh very rough granite stones then they become semi polished then become more polished and then finally it becomes grass so it shows the struggle that he went through um and at a at a point of time in his life he becomes philanthropic he started starts giving lot of money to you know for education for uh, for the food for the children and all so that's the reason that's the that's the point where it becomes you know nature takes over it becomes more green um the second aspect was uh this was this this is where the samadhi was where the ashes had to be uh, you know buried uh most of the scientists who worked with him very closely they they knew him and they would take during lunch time they would walk here under these trees so we wanted to create some accesses i'll explain that but while walking through we wanted the to get a glimpse of that uh, you know uh, that samadhi so so when you are walking through probably suddenly you will get a glimpse and then you know it will get connected to that so uh, it's more of a uh, you know you you just remember him during lunch time and you don't have to even enter the place um so so this is that path what i was talking about uh, this is this is the so the, this is the path they would take across now uh, we created this three different accesses even actually the actually the four ones but uh, basically that's the that's the grid that we got from the um, is 
the western sun from coming in and protects this area, which is the living room towards the other side. Uh, we wanted that sharpness, uh, again using similar texture what you see in a memorial, but this is slightly different, it's not the same. This is a sculpture what he had as one of his collections, which we brought in, put it here. We always had that um, Barcelona, Barcelona Pavilion, Miss Van der Rohe's, uh, you know, that image of Barcelona Pavilion, so um, place that sculpture. So through these gaps, water comes in. So you take a bean bag, uh, you know, sit on the floor with a with a hook and just get a glimpse of the outside world and use have your own small bit of water coming next to the, your bedroom. Um, actually, this is not a correct slide. The water level and floor level is exactly the same. Here, the water level has gone down a little bit. But our, our whole idea was to keep a very small. Um, uh, there is a small aluminium channel, uh, sorry, which uh, which separates it, and the water level and floor level is exactly the same. So it kind of gives that illusion whether it's a floor or it's a you know uh, water water. So as you come in, uh, that's the entry point, uh, and as you come in, there is a focal point. There is a pavilion. Uh, one sculpture was supposed to have come, but which has not come still. Uh, so this is how the landscape is done by Kanan, uh, landscape architect from Bangalore. And the interior is done by Kanan Modi from uh, from Hyderabad. But very, very minimal interior, says Hardy. There was really no need to do much. Um, uh, this is uh, this is actually the powder room, uh, guest toilet, but we wanted some special light to come in to the top. So as you come in, you see that pavilion at the end as one focal point. Uh, this is that looking towards the trees, that path that we're talking about. This is this was the original thing. Um, and the western wall where the water comes in. Uh, so this was the red ring. The idea was to to protect the western, wanted eastern sun to come in, but not the not the western sun. Uh, uh, some play of reflected light, which comes on to the deliberately bringing some direct light, some indirect light. Uh, this is how it looks like. So as you come in, you see that one slit there. That's all as a as a focal point, uh, and uh, across this path. Uh, you have these small slits which continue onto the wall also. Um, uh, at the end of it, we tried a lot of different elements to bring light into it, but eventually kept it very simple uh, with the light coming from the side, uh, and that becomes again a focal point. And then you have this perforated. So, some glimpse of reflection comes into the, which you don't see. Uh, wanted, uh, when you sit here, we wanted only the lower part to be visible. So you see just these legs of that sculpture with the exposed concrete wall. And as I said, the water level and floor level is same. So you get that illusion as if that floor is continuing. Uh, again, everywhere you try to work with these strong focal points. Uh, the way sort of when the light comes in. This was that guava tree which was replaced with it. This earlier it was a very sculptural tree. Now it is replaced with this. So maybe next time I'll be waiting for you, sir. Next time you'll come. Sure, sure. <laughs> so before moving, I read this quote many times, but today I learned this quote by seeing this project. Architect architecture is a social activity that has to do with some sort of communication or place of interaction. And that to change the environment is to change behavior. Now this project literally proved it. So I just don't know why I put it here. Maybe because I was a fan. So let's move forward. Firstly, I would really like to thank upon our sponsor, Simple Ceramics Kalburgi. Thank you for your support for this event. 
I would really like to appreciate architect Sanjay Moy sir and architect Bia Mohan sir for taking out time from their busy schedule to come to Kalburgi and to uh, explain us about your important roles and everything in architecture and for the architect fraternity sir. Thank you again. I would also like to appreciate Professor Kalpana Ma'am, Principal of Academics, PDAC EK College, Kalburgi. Thank you ma'am. Uh, I am uh, Mohan, Chairman of uh, Indian Institute of Architects, Karnataka Chapter. And I am glad that Kalbuki Center has uh, taken the lead to have these kind of events where we call uh, the speakers from all over. And today we have uh, our Sanjay Mohe from Bangalore as the first of the Spotlight Series uh, talk. And we are very grateful to Sanjay Mohe for being here with us and this and probably I think we'll, uh, Kalburgi will have much more events like this. I'm architect Sanjay Mohe and um, thanks to Mohan for uh, calling me to Kalburgi and then um, we had this wonderful session here interacting with students, interacting with architects, visiting some of the monuments and uh, there's a lot of energy around and uh, uh, I'm feeling really glad that I visited here and met some of these young students so passionate about their work and a lot of young architects as well, as well as senior architects. Um, and it was a wonderful visit. I really feel glad that I came here and, uh, you know, witnessed this entire event. Wishing all the best to everyone.